Hey, seventh graders, welcome to your fourth lesson uh, for chapter two. And what we're going to be talking about today in this lesson is we're going to be talking about the percent equation. You just learned how to do the percent proportion. Part over whole equals percent of 100. Well, now we're going to learn another equation that you can use to figure out different pieces that are missing of a pie. So our objective is we're going to solve problems that involve percent by using the percent equation. So this equation is primarily used anytime that you have percents. Our standards that we're going to be addressing is 7th grade ratios and proportions standard 2, 2C, 3, and equivalent expressions standard number 3. Let's go ahead and see what the percent equation is and start this lesson. In this lesson, one of the biggest concepts that we're going to be talking about is the percent equation. So in this lesson, it's all about the percent equation. It's not about the percent proportion, it's about the percent equation. So we're going to be solving problems using the percent equation like we did before, but now we're going to be mainly focused on the percent, but the biggest thing we need to understand is that our percent has to be a decimal in order to use the percent equation correctly. So our equation is part is equal to our percent as a decimal times the whole. Our part is always equal to our percent times our whole, but our percent has to be a decimal. Now, one of the things I've given you down here is the way to change a percent to a decimal. To change a percent to a decimal, all you got to do is divide it by 100. So really, this means that our part is equal to our percent divided by 100 times the whole, which is kind of similar to what we were doing before. Now, if you want to get to the, decimal, or the percent being a decimal a little bit quicker, all that really means is you're going to have to put a decimal behind a percent. Like, let's say we had 25 percent. All we got to do is write the number 25, put a decimal behind it. And this means that we're going to move the decimal two spots to the left. So we're going to move it one, two spots. So my percent as a decimal would be the decimal 0.25. And 0.25 represents 25 percent. Um, if I had 40 percent... I would know that this decimal, it would be 0 0.40 because I'd act like there's a decimal here and I'd move it two spots to the left. So whenever you're changing a percent to a decimal, all you gotta do is move a decimal two spots to the left and that's your percent as a decimal. That's the same as dividing it by 100. So in this lesson, we're gonna be changing percents to decimals and we're gonna use that to find some problem or find out some answers to our problems by using this equation. Part is equal to our percent as a decimal times the whole. Now, just a quick reminder based on percent equations or proportions, the word is still tells me it's the part. And the word of still tells me it's the whole. And our percent is still divided by 100, but in this case, we're actually changing our percent to a decimal. So let's go ahead and start our lesson. In example one, we're gonna be solving an equation that uses the percent equation instead of the percent proportion. You guys previously did the percent proportion. In this one, we have to use the percent equation to solve this problem. So we're gonna kinda of do it the same way. We're always gonna start with part equals our percent times a whole. Reminder, we have to make our percent a decimal. So that means all we do is move the decimal two spots to the left. It says what number is, so we don't know is. So that's where our variable is going to go. P is going to be our variable because we're looking for the part. 12%, all we got to do is change our percent to a decimal. So it's 0.12. Of means times. So we're going to multiply by 150. So if we wanted to figure out the part, all we got to do is take 12% as a decimal times 150, and that gives us our answer. So I have my calculator here to help me out. 0.12 or 12 hundredths times 150 gives me 18. So our part is equal to 18. So as you can see, the percent equation is actually fairly easy to use, kind of like the percent proportion, as long as we put numbers where they go. And when we're working with percents, we change percents to decimals. And that's our answer. Let's try another problem just like this. In example two, we're going to be using the percent equation to write and solve this problem. So I'm going to start with my part, which is P equals our percent times whole. And I just need to remember that my percent has to be a decimal. 
it says what number is. So I'm looking for the part, so I'm going to put the variable there. 46%, I know that 40% or 46%, all I do is move the decimal two to the left. So that's 0.46. The word of tells me it's my whole, so I'm going to multiply 0.46 times 200 to get my answer. So I'm definitely going to use a calculator to do this multiplication just a little bit quicker and easier. 0.46 or 46 hundredths times 200, and I get 92. So my part would equal 92. That means if I had 92 out of 200, I would have 46%. And that's the answer to this question. Let's switch gears and let's look at something different. Let's find the percent that's missing. In example 3, we see that we're missing the percent. It says 21 is what percent? So you're even asking us, what's the percent of 40? If we had 21 out of 40, what percent do we get? So we're going to set it up using the percent equation. And the percent equation again is part equals our percent as a decimal times the whole. Well, in this case, 21 is, so I know that 21 is my part, equals my percent, but I don't know the percent, as a decimal of 40. That means I would be multiplying by 40. In this case, we're going to actually say that the percent's missing, and this is where we're going to put a variable in. Because we're missing the percent, that's where our variable goes. Now, we've learned in the past that if we have a number with a variable that's multiplying, we want to get rid of multiplication by doing division. And that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to divide by the number that's with the variable. Kind of like when we cross multiply and divide, we're doing the same thing. So we're going to divide by 40 because 40 is multiplying by the variable. And if we divide by 40 on one side, we have to divide by 40 on the other. 40 divided by 40 cancels out because that gives us 1a is equal to, now I'm going to type this in my calculator, 21 divided by 40, and I get 0 0.525. So this number right here represents my percent as a decimal. But the question doesn't ask me what my percent is as a decimal, it just asks me what my percent is. So instead of changing a percent to a decimal, we're going to change a decimal back to a percent. Reminder, when we change a percent to a decimal, let's say we had 32% and we we're changing that to a decimal, all we would do is act like there's a decimal here and move it to this way. So we'd put the decimal in front and 32% as a decimal would be 0.32. Well, in this case, since we already have a decimal, what we would do is we'd take that decimal and we'd move it back two spaces. And that would be our percent because it's actually like we're multiplying our decimal times 100 because all percents are out of 100. So in this case, all we got to do is grab the decimal and move it two spaces over. And our A, or our percent, is equal to 52.5%. So, if you had 21 out of 40, you would have 52.5% as your final percentage of that goal. Let's do another one just like this, finding percent that's missing. All right, in example four, we're going to figure out that 26 is what percent of 32? So 26 is, that means it's our part of 32. 32 is my whole. So what we do is we start with our percent equation. Part equals our percent times whole. Well, in this case, we know that 26 is, so 26 is equal to our part, is what percent? We don't know the percent, so this is where I'm going to put a variable. I'm going to use a B this time, of 32, and I know that the word of means times 32. So in this case, I want to figure out B, which means I want to get it alone. I'm going to draw a line through my equal sign. And I know that 32 is multiplying by B. So if I want to get rid of times 32, we divide by 32. And if you divide by 32 on one side, divide by 32 on the other. Kind of like what we did when we cross multiplied and divide to solve for variables. We're doing the same thing. 32 divided by 32 cancels out because any number divided by itself is 1. So we have one letter B is equal to, now I'm going to use my calculator to get this fraction. And a reminder, this is our percent as a decimal. 26 divided by 32 
0 0.8125. So this means that I'm going to move the decimal from here two spots over. So the letter B, or my percent, is equal to 81.25%. And that's my final answer. So if I had 26 questions right out of a 32 question test, I would have an 81.25% B in the class. That's a pretty good grade. Hopefully you guys are starting to get this. That If you don't, that's okay. We will practice in the classroom and I will answer all your questions. Let's go ahead and look at the hole missing and try to figure out those solutions. In example five, we're gonna be solving a problem that says 13 is 26% of what number? So in this case, we're missing of, which means we're missing the whole. So we've looked at missing the part, we've looked at missing the percent, now we're gonna be missing the whole and our job is to figure that out. So we're gonna start with our percent equation, part equals percent times whole, and just a reminder again, percent has to be a decimal. 13 is, so I know that 13 is the part. 26%, hopefully you guys have caught on that 26% is 0.26. And if you didn't know that, you can always type your percent divided by 100 to change it to a decimal. Of what number? That means times our whole. Well, if we want to figure out what the whole is, we have to get rid of this 0.26. And if you're looking at this, W is multiplying by 0.26. So just like what we were doing before, we would divide by the number that's multiplying by the percent. In this case, we're actually going to divide by the percent as a decimal to get our whole. So if we were going to solve this, the only thing we have to do is we have to get W by itself. So we need to get rid of times 0.26, and the opposite of times 0.26 is divided by 0.26. So we're going to draw a line, and we're going to divide by 0.26 on one side, divide by 0.26 on the other side. Oop, and I don't want to put a negative sign there. All right, 13 divided by 0.26, that's 50, is equal to a 0.26 divided by 0.26 cancels out, which means that the only thing left is W. So if we had 13 out of 50, we'd have 26%, because 50 is our whole, 13 out of 50. Let's do one more problem, and then we're done for this lesson already, and that's the end of it. We will practice some more in class, but I feel like hopefully you guys are getting the gist of it just from using the percent equation. The percent equation is good to use any time that we have a percent. We can change it to a decimal and go about this way. But it's okay. If you really like the percent proportions, you can still use that method that we've already learned. Let's do another one. For our final problem, we're going to figure out that 12 is 40% of what number? Our job is to figure out what number we're talking about. We're going to do a percent proportion, our percent equation, not proportion. So part is equal to our percent times whole. We know that 12 is, so we know the part is 12. 40% as a decimal is 0 0.40 of means times, and we're going to be multiplying by the whole. So our job is to figure out what is our whole, what's W. So I'm going to draw a line through our equal sign. And if I want to get W by itself, I need to get rid of times 0 0.40. To get rid of times 0 0.40, I divide by 0 0.40. And if I divide by 0 0.40 on one side, I divide by 0 0.40 on the other, or 40 hundredths. So I'm going to go ahead and type this in my calculator. 40, or sorry, 12 divided by 0 0.40 or 40 hundredths equals 30. So this divided by this is 30 equals 40 divided by 40 or 0 0.40 divided by 0 0.40 is 1. So one letter W is equal to 30. And that's the answer to this problem. That's it for today's lesson. You guys did awesome today. I hope that you guys like this. It's another short video, a little bit longer than the last one, but we haven't went over it yet in class. Um, this is just kind of foreshadowing what's coming. I know I'm not there for you guys today on Wednesday when you're watching this video in class, but make sure you have all the notes. I'm going to help you out on Thursday as we practice this, and you guys will do awesome. I know you will. So you guys did awesome today. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and smash that notification bell. And I will see you tomorrow.